he comes around and is like, he stops right in front of me, gets out of his car and walks around and say, what the f you gonna say now? Yeah, what the f y'all gonna do now? Everything is slowed down. Like I see the gun halfway aimed at me though, at me, I'm like, Yo, what's going on with my boys, man? It's your boy, Uncle Brother YND, the walking dating Bible himself, the dating God. Today, we got another slimy, grimy story. So y'all know how this go. I'm gonna tell y'all the whole story, exactly what happened, 100% real, 100% raw and true. And I'm gonna give y'all at the end my synopsis and my advice that goes along with it so you can apply this to your life and make sure you do not make the same mistakes that I have. If you knew around here, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. <laughs> Saying, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button, my brother. Go ahead, comment, share this with everybody. All right, so let's get into this. We're going to be talking about two times that simp ass niggas pulled a gun out on your boy YND over some hoes. It's really crazy how it is out here, man. You got to be careful with these weak ass niggas that have no game, that got no real confidence, and they insecure. They got that getting ass saying on their hip. It's crazy out here what niggas will do over a girl. They will, niggas will really crash out over here okay so let's take this back this is 2018 i am a freshman in college okay shout out to my nigga e okay you know what i'm saying if you know you know this was my roommate this was my nigga at that time this probably occurred about a month or so into school okay so at this point niggas then already kind of made their clicks like I, me and him we got our niggas that we hang with he got some of his own friends i got some of mine and we got moments where we come together usually on a friday night or saturday night we walking around we got the hoes the heemy heems you know what i'm saying the bus down tatiana the thigh pockets rolling with us you know what i'm saying you gotta have the hoes that's how you get into the parties you know what i'm saying that's why i tell you niggas you gotta know how to socialize are you red pill alpha niggas that's weird as shit y'all gonna be fucked up in it bit because how you gonna be able to get it? You know, you, how you gonna be able to mingle with girls and get anything with girls if you don't know how to talk to them without being like and all of that weird shit? But anyway, we got our own little clique. We got girls that we be rolling with and we hitting different parties. Okay, this is about a month in. So one night it was a Friday night, I believe, and we was all walking together as a group. Everybody had their fly outfits on. It's me and my nigga E, some of my other niggas out there. We all together. You feel what I'm saying? Trying to find the best parties or whatever we about to do. You feel what I'm saying? And we was at like this curb, right? And randomly, some nigga comes skirting down there. He on that, you know what I'm saying? He one of them niggas that think he's so cool because he got some car or something that somebody bought for him or something. Like, nigga, you, we know you couldn't buy that, my nigga. He pull up anyway, and he got a girl in a passenger seat. And we're like at this curb, and then we start crossing the street. Now, mind you, it's a big group, okay? It's a big group of us. And some of these groups, we not even together. Like sometimes it's just people crossing paths, right? Cause everybody, you know how it is on college campus. Everybody trying to walk around and find the best spots to go to and just moving around mingling, right? So we all going past, uh, crossing this street and the girl puts her head out the window. It's like, hurry the fuck up. Y'all taking forever and all of this stuff. Now, mind you, I'm a loose cannon. For anybody that know me when it comes to socializing and stuff, but when it comes to bigger groups, especially if I got one of my niggas with me that I'm real tight with and I'm energized, I'm like socially inept sometimes. And I just be saying shit and doing shit that's wild. So I'm telling him, I'm like, this bitch drunk as fuck. The guy stops the car. This is how much nerve he had and how bougie and ratchet this bitch was. And she was all right. She wasn't even mad or nothing. She was cool. She get out the car, feeling herself because she with some man that's in some fancy ass sports car. She gets out. She like, what the fuck is y'all doing? Y'all taking forever. I, I don't know if she go to this school or not. You know what I'm saying? But she real close to the campus. So she probably was a senior or something thinking she flexing on us. And she like, y'all freshmen, this and that, y'all doing this or whatever. And she's but making it harder for us to cross the street while she's telling us, get the fuck out the way, right? And she gets out the car. That's how much nerve she has. I'm like, this bitch drunk. Some other people start being like, girl, you drunk, get back in the car, right? I get more bold with it. I'm like, bitch, you drunk. Yeah, 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 bitch, you drunk. And, and I'm in the crowd, so I can kind of hide and duck behind somebody. It wasn't me that said it, you feel it was that nigga, beat his ass, right? That's the type of nigga I was. I'm like, bitch, you drunk, bitch, you drunk. And then her boyfriend get out the car. He stopped everything. He had this music blasting and everything before. He stopped the car, he get out. He like, who just called my girlfriend a bitch? Some buff ass dark skinned nigga boy. He, you know, he had the do rag on too. He one of them niggas, you never see the waves. He just always got the do rag on. He just looked like one of them type niggas. He talking about some, so who called my girl a bitch? Everybody get quiet. There's a whole bunch of white boys over there with us too. They scared. They ain't never seen a nigga like that before. You know what I'm saying? So they all looking around. We looking around, me and my roommate look at each other, knowing it was me that had been saying it and some other people. Nobody say nothing. He like, yeah, yeah, y'all scared because you nigga, I put down for my girl and all of this stuff. I'm like, bro, you really hurt over this? This nigga starts walking away. As his back is turned and the girl's back is turned, they about to get back in the car. My roommate yell, 
my roommate, yeah, yeah, get back in the car, you drunk bitch, shut up, bitch, you drunk, or something like that he say, right? Yeah, bitch, shut your ass up, drunk bitch. They turn around and like, who said that? Who said that, right? Now, what's crazy is, you know, we just start walking the other way. Cause we like, my nigga, eat, we gotta go. Cause this finna get bad. So me and the group that we was with, the other dudes and some of the girls, we all start walking another way, right? Now, what I ended up learning later is one of them white boys over there that was not cool with us snitched on a nigga and said it was that nigga over there. You feel what I'm saying? So they snitched. At the time, we didn't know. So we walking across the campus to another side, right? We like, let's just get away from this. They on some bullshit. We walk to the other side, okay? Basically, the way the campus was set up is like, let's say we was here. We All we did was just walk this way, right? So even though there's no street right here, because this is the whole campus, like the area that you can't really drive on, this dude and the girl gets in the car. They drive all the way around, and as we're walking this way, they drive all the way around and meet us here, okay? He get out the car like, yeah, he said it was one of y'all in this group that said it. It seemed like... It seemed like he just knew it was this group, right? That other group snitched on us, basically, right? They pussied out, you feel me? And they was like, nigga, they ain't gonna, you ain't gonna put this off on me. The nigga gets out the car. He pulls a gun out right in front of us. When I tell you we this close, I look at this nigga. He's actually like this. And then he, you can see that he pulled his gun out, right? Talking about some, who called my girl a bitch? You need to apologize right now. These niggas is tweaking. Nigga, me, my roommate, and like two other niggas. Niggas hit the, <laughs> nigga. Listen, and this was funny, my, my roommate was kind of a bigger guy, right? He was a little overweight. Nigga, when I tell you, I seen a fat nigga run, the niggas, <laughs> nigga was gone, you feel what I'm saying? So we running, niggas, like, they ain't beat me though, nigga. Yeah, see, see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah, 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 nah. Y'all ain't gonna kill me like that. I ain't finna die over that. That's what I'm thinking. I ain't gonna die today, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm thinking. So nigga, I run all the way back. Boom. We get back to the place. Uh, out of breath, this and that. Some nigga tell somebody else, you know, that they had a gun, whatever. So then the police show up and they trying to get us to file a police report. Yeah, I'm a nigga at the end of the day, man. You know what I'm saying? You see what I got? I'm free Tory. You know, I'm talking about gun violence and shit. And they saying this nigga shot a bitch. I don't think he did it. But free my nigga Tory, you know what I'm saying? I stand on it. So I say all that to say, nigga, I'm not finna snitch. What is this? So I'm like, nah, like, I'm not writing no police report. My roommate E, my nigga, like, hell nah, right? Some of the white boys did, but we did not, okay? And that was the end of that, okay? Now, let's go to another story. Now, this happened another time, but it still includes my roommate. So this happened probably two, three weeks after that, right? I know y'all gonna say, I'm a traumatized man, okay? I know I've been through it all, nigga, nigga, pop, pop, you know what I'm saying, on my ass. They, they trying to get me, they trying to get me, but I survived every single time, you know what I'm saying? I made a way. I made a way. So one night, it was another like, I think this one was a Saturday night and the whole crew was together. We was at one of my other homeboys dorms. We had some, it was some heebies over there. You feel what I'm saying? It was the niggas over there. Niggas was playing games. They had like two, three monitors up, playing music. We all chilling. They in there smoking and drinking. I don't, I, at this time, I never drink at all. And I definitely never smoked in my life to this day. I've never smoked, right? So we all in there just kicking it, laughing, woo, right? This is this is freshman year. This is first semester. Niggas are just happy to have freedom, right? We chilling in there. They like, oh, there's this bar. Okay, somebody on campus told us that there was this bar that be letting the freshmen in and letting niggas drink, even though they know they're not supposed to, but it ain't that far off campus, right? If you go at a certain time or whatever. So they like, D, you trying to go? I'm like, nah, I'm straight. I'm about to go to the music building because I was on my young and disciplined shit, guys. I always been a nigga on my purpose and on my grind. You know what I'm saying? I was probably making one of my bangers. I'm gonna put up a clip real quick. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, I'm trying to stay focused on that. I'm like, nah, y'all do y'all thing. You feel me? I'm about to go to the music room, practice my piano, practice my singing, just stay on my grind, right? I'm trying to sacrifice. Everybody else having fun. A lot of times I would like to stay to myself and grind. And instead of just having fun going out, I would just fuck bitches. That's what I would do. Okay, that, that was my free time. You feel what I'm saying? And so I get a call later in the night, right? They talk about some. D, you need to come pick us up, man. You need to come pick us up. I've been calling Rex, right? This is some other dude. This is like an older dude. He was creepy and weird, but he was cool as fuck to me. But a lot of people would say he was creepy and weird. He was a new, another dude we was cool with that stayed across like, uh, he was on the same floor as us, but on the other side. So I guess they was trying to call him because he was like the older guy that would come pick people up when they was drunk. Cause a lot of them didn't have cars on campus. A lot of freshmen don't, right? They don't even have cars yet. And he was like a junior or a senior, right? So he would be that guy. They couldn't get a hold of him. 
Okay, he was probably stoned out somewhere. So they called me like, hey D, we need you to come pick us up, right? And obviously I don't have a car neither, but I got a license and I'm sober. So they like, can you go over to Rex's dorm? Cause I knew where his room was on my floor. Can you knock on his door and get him like to wake up? We think he's asleep, we trying to call him. I'm like, all right, cool. And they trying to do this because they all drunk, they need to get picked up and they want to get driven back to campus, right? And so I guess they didn't want to walk or whatever because it is like a decent walk or I don't know, right? And I think they also wanted to get some food and stuff, so they just needed a car, right? They needed a sober designated driver. That was going to be me, okay? And so I walk over there to Rex's dorm. I knock on that shit. Uh, I just keep banging on it. He opened it. He fried in the motherfucker to muscle. What? I fell asleep. Like, he, he fucked up. I'm like, all right. Um, did you, you intoxicated? He like, yeah, I, I had this and I, I took this and I took these pills and all this. He like, you can drive though. My car in the back, you know, I just ride with you. We go pick him up. I'm like, okay, cool bet. So we go out there and we drive, uh, to the bar to pick him up. Now I get, everybody get in the car. So we got two girls in the back and two, and two guys. I believe that's what it was. It was two girls. Um, and it was and it was two guys. One of them is my roommate, right? Including Rex, right? Who's also this is his car, but he's sitting in the back. So it's like four of them squished up in the back, I believe. And then my roommate sitting next to me, and I'm the driver. Okay, normal night. I'm picking them up, thinking everything cool. They was all intoxicated, irritating the fuck out of me because you know how drunk and how people act. But I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. So I pick them up. I'm driving them back. You know, and next thing you know, I keep seeing this car behind me that's following me this whole way back. Okay, that's following me this whole way back. And I'm looking like, okay, I ain't thinking that much of it. All of a sudden, we playing our music in the car. You know, we all talking, tell the girls in the back talking about their night. One of the niggas in the back, he trying to run his moves on the girl. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm trying to put on the boot up in the front. You know what I'm saying? You gotta say, you gotta run the two man. You know, in this case, it was a five man. You feel me? But I'm always trying to help a nigga out. You know what I'm saying? I see he was back there, boot up, cuddling. You know, you just put it on subtly, nigga. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm like, all right, they caked up back there. You know, we finna get it poppin'. Had to redeem myself, you feel? Oh, poppin'. Had to redeem myself, you know what I'm saying? But um, we driving, I see this car behind me. So I look back one time, I'm like, damn, like, okay. It's like a red car. I'm like, okay, that means they been following us. I asked my roommate, I'm like, you see that back there? He drunk, he fucked up, he like, uh, yeah, I see it. I'm like, y'all know who that is? He's like, nah, like, don't worry about it. it. Ain't nothing. I'm like, okay, cool. We drive the music up, nah, 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 you know, chilling. Nah, nah. Next thing you know, that same car, it just, we in like this tight roll where it's kind of like a one way, right? It's like one way to go. But he drives like up next to me and, and he's driving like this. He reaches over to the passenger door, right? So if he was driving like this one hand, he reaches over to the passenger door and flings it open, right? And I'm right next to him in the car. So I'm like, oh shit, like I gotta swerve around because the door just fly open, right? I'm like, what the fuck wrong with this nigga? Like, what the fuck? I'm like, y'all see that? And the girls in the back like, yeah, what's going on? The dudes in the back like, uh, what the fuck? You know what I mean? My roommate up in the front, he like, he, this nigga fried. Like, this nigga like this. Yeah, I saw it. Like everything, like not, not phasing him. He just chill about everything, right? I keep driving. And I look back, I don't see that car no more, right? I don't see it in my rear view mirrors or I don't see it in my mirror, I don't see it behind me no more, right? So I'm like, okay, maybe I'm cool. I'm, I'm like, y'all know who that is? Y'all know why he did that? They're like, nah, like we don't know who that is, right? Next thing I know, that car comes right back again. And this time, if I'm driving like this, this me is behind me, it does this. Like, like right before we get to campus, where I'm about to turn into the parking lot to park, I'm like, I'm pulling up here. He comes around, it's like, er, he stops right in front of me, gets out of his car and walks around and say, what the fuck you gonna say now? Yeah, what the fuck y'all gonna do now? I'm looking like, bro, E, do you know this nigga? Yo, Rex, da 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 I'm saying all the little Sasha, Sarah, Sarah, da, 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 Becky. I'm like, do y'all know this nigga? They just freaking the fuck out like, what's going on with that? You know, they drunk, like I said, my roommate like this. Ain't nothing phasing this man. He just, he just chilling, looking at the nigga like, okay. The nigga like, what the fuck you gonna do now? Now this was crazy. He followed me that whole time, but I didn't know because what I realized was he turned his lights off. So he turned his lights off and then followed me still. And when he gets out the car, he's like, what the fuck you gonna do now? I'm looking at him, I'm, my brain is in a frenzy. I don't know who this nigga is. I ain't even been out tonight. The nigga pulls a blinky blink. You fit outside. And he didn't like aim it like this, but he like, what the fuck you gonna do now? He halfway kind of like turning. 
Nigga, when I tell you, I felt like I was in Final Destination. I felt like it was some old spy spectacular Spider-Man, Marvel Spider-Man. Uh, Spidey senses is tingling. The slimy, grimy senses was tingling, my nigga. I was like, in, in my head, like, I was like, I gotta get the fuck out of this bitch. Like, that's what I'm thinking to myself. In my mind, I'm like, I gotta get out of this. Everything slowed down. Like, I see the gun halfway aimed at me, though. At me. I was like, I ain't even do that. You know what I'm saying? What you finna shoot me for? That's what I'm thinking to myself. And I'm about to die over something that has nothing to do with me. I knew it had something to do with them, but it didn't have nothing to do with me. And you pointed at me. You said that. And he drunk, like, what you gonna do now? And he pulled it out. Dude had to be like six foot even. He looked like he was a mixed dude. Uh, could have been black and white, could have been like Dominican or something. He had like a red shirt on with a low haircut. All right, I ain't gonna forget that, goddammit. And he raised it up. I'm like, what is happening? Everything slows down, nigga. I do some old GTA shit, nigga. YND was spinning that motherfucker, spinning that block. Nigga, I said, yeah, you know what I'm saying? After I turned the, the wheel all the way around, and I'm this way, right? The car is this way. Now, you know, you might look at that and say, damn, YND, you did that so sharp and so quick. It was like a narrow little street we was on and everything. But guess why I did it? Because I'm a piece of shit. And in my mind, if he starts shooting, nigga, I turn around like this. You know what I'm saying? So I'm driving this way. I'm not even looking at the road. I'm like this on the gas. Because in my mind, if he starts shooting, it's going to hit them and not me. You know what I'm saying? It's about self-preservation. You get, Listen, you can't blame me. You know what I'm saying? Don't blame me. You can't blame me. I've always been slimy grimy. Nigga, it ain't just been with the hoes. It's been with me, period. I'm a selfish nigga. You feel me? If he starts shooting, it's going to hit them in the back. And everybody else that has something to do with it. Not me. That's what I'm thinking. So I'm going away. I look up. I take a right. I take a left because I'm like, I can't crash, right? So I got to look up. But I'm still kind of ducking, scared. And I turn right. I turn left. I run all these stop signs. Next thing you know, wee, 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 wee. And like a cop cow. Oh, when I get up on me, yeah. Y'all already know it was the popo. Mrs. Officer. I'm like, this is wild. Like, why they gotta get me done? Get him in there. Like, why me? Like, okay, so I pull over. Then nigga get out the car. You know, he do his whole, you know, you ran three stop signs. I'm like, no shit, dingus. But in my mind, you know what I'm saying? That's what I said in my mind. I couldn't say that to him. I'm like, yeah, yeah officer, it's, it's a crazy story. I'm like, you didn't see that guy that was following me? He's like, um, no, I just saw you run three stop signs. Of course, right? Of course, you see the nigga run three stop signs. Not that nigga over there, though. You feel what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, that's how it be. And I tell him, like, hey, dude had a gun. I had a women that's on the phone. I had that. And I was like, I don't know how I explained it to him, but I had to hit the boom to the tongue to and get the fuck about that bitch. You feel me? And so he like, okay, well, y'all go to school around here. I'm like, yeah. He like, do you? Let me see your IDs. I'm like, goddamn. You know, and then the white boy in the back, he tell me, yeah, yeah, we go to school around here. I'm like, yeah, thanks, man. Thanks, Chester. You know, because he started taking the serious after that. He like, oh, it's white people in the back. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. He like, okay, yeah. So he look at our IDs, whatever. He like, oh, okay, cool, okay, cool. He saw my last name and he and he knew some of the people I was related to. He like, oh, I know some of your people, whatever. I'm like, yeah, that's cool, right? He like, okay, I'll let you off with a warning. Uh, we gonna follow you back though, so we can make a police report. Right, and he's like, I just want to get everybody's names. Um, and uh, mind you, because my, my roommate never gave his ID, he's like, Sir, can you give your ID? I'm like, This is my roommate. He started acting like a fool this whole night. This nigga been chilling. He talking about some, uh, Can I get your ID, sir? What's your name? He said, No, nope, I'm not the driver. No, nope, I'm not the driver. No, nope, no, nope, I'm not giving it. No, nope, I'm not the driver. I am not the one driving, sir. I'm like, Bro, can you chill? Like, what is he talking about? So now I'm not about to snitch. I ain't about to say. I'm like, bro, chill. This is how niggas get shot. You feel me? So he stayed quiet. He ended up chilling out. The officer just let it be. Okay, the officer just let it be. Now, when the conclusion happened, we look back. The girl's faces is all flush. The white boy, uh, the white boy face all flush. The other motherfucker, uh, Rex, his face, he normal as hell because he fried. He don't know what the fuck happened. He he on cloud nine, cloud nine. You know what I'm saying? That nigga, he sky high. You feel me? That nigga back there. What? Like he just fucked up like he don't know what's going on. The girls actually, one of them I believe she started crying because she was so freaked the fuck out over what happened. And then they had some of them write police reports. You know what I'm saying? And that was it. All right, that was it right there. So two times, my ID could have got pop, pop, up, up, you know what I'm saying? Including the other ones. If y'all don't know about that, go watch that video. You feel me? Where the scent came up to my job ready to get that on me because of his baby mama that was trying to cheat with me. Like. It's crazy. I was finna die over something that had nothing to do with me. Now, this is the twist in the Catch-22 here. I ended up finding out that, basically, my roommate said something to a girl that that dude was trying to fuck with, 
at the bar that they was at, and that's why that nigga was in his feelings. So, what's the whole story of this? What's the whole moral of the story here? One, what's funny to you might not be funny to somebody else. So you always gotta be um, wise with your words. You can be funny and be insulting in some sort of ways with your friends if y'all all got a mutual understanding that those insults are really jokes and that's how y'all play. But when it comes to strangers, especially a nigga with his girl, a simp ass nigga, a beta male that has no game, no confidence in himself, and he is not that nigga that feels like he's him, he is going to be triggered by that because those niggas will die over coochie. For real, my nigga. Them, them niggas will crash out over some coochie just to make some girl feel protected or whatever. And this ain't your wife, this ain't nothing. This just another thigh pocket that's gonna get an ass to somebody else. Y'all probably gonna break up, my brother. It is not worth it. But in their mind, they gotta do everything for these girls and over a woman because they got fragile egos and insecure men and they still seek the validation to feel tough and to also be approved by women, okay? And that's another part of the lesson of the story, guys. Uh, never do this. Never be a crash out nigga over some coochie. Whether it's driving yourself to your death. I don't know who did that. I mean, it's nigga. I don't know who did that, but you know what I'm saying? Whether it's, uh, you know, being desperate for ass. Whether it's fighting for ass for no reason. Especially when the women put you in the situations. Like that first girl. She was the one for no reason who got out the car and was yelling at us and telling us, what the fuck y'all doing? And move. Why y'all taking so long? All of this stuff. Like, come on, bro. Why is you trying to go to bat for some girl that puts you into some shit? You see what I'm saying? So, all in all, do not mess with simps, guys. Like, do not fuck with girls that got boyfriends like I done told y'all. Do not be trying to argue with girls. Don't even be cussing out girls or nothing like this. And be careful when it comes to playing with another nigga and his bitch or a girl he might even think is his bitch. Keep that shit all to yourself. Move low-key. Move smart. Vet these girls out. And make sure you understand that a lot of these niggas is weak ass emotional men, all right? Like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Patreon for in-depth dating advice where I break down how to do this, improving your confidence, getting real dating coach advice so you can be the best version of yourself out here on the dating market and know how to deal with girls, vet for quality women, and set up your situations how you want to. I will see y'all in the next one. Make sure you subscribe. Peace!